What are you doing? My daughter-in-law screamed, just before my husband's funeral. As my grieving daughter-in-law was splashed with a bucket of water by my five-year-old granddaughter. Grandpa's ghost told me to do it. My granddaughter, her resolute expression eerily reminiscent of my deceased husband. What's wrong? Can you see Grandpa? I gently asked my granddaughter, as my entire family watched intently. The child possessing mysterious powers, pointed at my daughter-in-law. Because this lady did something to Grandpa. At her whispered words, the relatives all stood up with terrifying expressions, causing an uproar. In my stunned state, I came to understand my kind husband's true feelings through my granddaughter. In an age where late-life divorces are not uncommon, even married couples may choose to part ways if their hearts have grown apart. Fortunately, this was not the case for me. Married to my distant relative Tom for 35 years, his kindness allowed me to enjoy peaceful days. However, for the past three years, I had been carrying one particular worry. Let me introduce our children as well. Our 33-year-old daughter, Sophia, got married and moved far away six years ago. Our 30-year-old son, Michael, got married three years ago and lives nearby. When Michael got married, his wife Lisa was 22. Fresh out of college, she was very beautiful, and Michael, who was head over heels for her, has been following her lead since their marriage, but he seemed happy. Our daughter and her husband have a five-year-old daughter named Mia. They seem to be enjoying their days, and Mia, who is cute and talkative, was a treasure to both my husband and me. Because they live far away, we didn't have many opportunities to see them, but we always eagerly awaited the chance to see our first grandchild. When will we see Mia next? Maybe during the holidays? I would ask. We promised to go to the zoo together last time. My husband would reply. Well, in that case, I'll make a lunchbox. Let's all eat together on a bench, I would say. That sounds great. I'm looking forward to that day. My husband would respond. Those peaceful days came to an end three years ago, right after Michael married Lisa. My husband, Tom, suddenly collapsed at work and was rushed to the hospital. He managed to survive, but he was left with severe aftereffects and became mostly bedridden. My only concern was about him. Thankfully, the insurance came through, so I quit my job to focus on taking care of my husband. Due to his illness, my husband could no longer speak, but I still strongly wished for Tom to live as long as possible. I also held a faint hope that one day we might be able to converse like we used to. He was a kind and compassionate person to everyone, and thanks to him, I was able to enjoy happy days. However, when I had to go out for my own medical appointments or family matters, I couldn't take care of him so I relied on a helper. Although my son Michael and his wife Lisa lived nearby, Michael was busy with work, and Lisa, a housewife, disliked helping with caregiving, so I didn't think to rely on them. Surely you don't expect me to help just because I'm the daughter-in-law? Caregiving is smelly and dirty, and I can't do it. Lisa declared even before I asked her, I didn't think it was natural for the daughter-in-law to help, but honestly, I did wish she would lend a hand a little. However, at some point, my daughter-in-law suddenly started saying, I'll help with the caregiving. I'm your daughter-in-law, and if you overexert yourself and collapse, that would be a big problem. Thank you. 
That would be a great help, I replied. I was grateful and began to rely on her, thinking that even a young daughter-in-law can grow and mature. However, while taking turns with Lisa to care for my husband, I noticed something. Our pet cat, Kitty, who always slept beside him, started to act aggressively towards Lisa. It was strange because Kitty was usually a quiet, elderly cat. I also began to feel a sense of unease about my husband. His usually calm expression turned into an angry growl when he looked at me. Additionally, the number of towels in his room decreased, and the tissue paper seemed to vanish rapidly. What is going on? I asked Lisa about it, and she explained that she used them to care for Tom, who drooled a lot. I was moved when I heard that. You're doing all that? Thank you, Lisa. What are you talking about? He's important to me too, so it's only natural. She replied. I was grateful and happy that she was taking such good care of him. However, a few days after that conversation, my husband suddenly passed away. While I was out for a medical appointment, Lisa, who was with him, noticed something was wrong and called an ambulance, but it was too late. When I rushed to the hospital, Tom was lying there, lifeless, with his eyes closed. Tom, this can't be, please, open your eyes. A little while ago, the hospital had said he seemed to be doing well, so I was shocked that my husband passed away so suddenly. Perhaps when he growled at me, he was trying to tell me he wasn't feeling well. If I had taken him to the hospital right away, maybe he could have been saved. I was filled with regret, unable to eat or cry. I had no idea at the time that a terrifying truth was hidden there. On the day of my husband's funeral, we held it at home as he had always wished. Fortunately, we were able to borrow the parking lot of the nearby community center, and many familiar neighbors came to help. In my days, my son and his wife took charge of the funeral arrangements. Tom, why did you leave us so soon? I wanted to spend more time with you. Lisa cried, even more than I did. Seeing her cry so much, the relatives were moved, thinking she had taken good care of him. As people continued to gather, our granddaughter Mia, whom my husband had always wanted to see, came with our daughter. Mia toddled over to my husband's portrait and tilted her head. Grandpa, what happened? As I watched her curiously, an astonishing event occurred shortly after. Mia suddenly walked out into the hallway and then, out of nowhere, splashed a bucket of water on the grieving Lisa from behind. The place was in an uproar. Ah! Uh, what are you doing? Screamed Lisa. Because Grandpa's ghost told me to. Said Mia. Hearing Mia's words, the relatives who had been making a commotion turned pale and focused their attention on the little girl. At that moment, Mia's parents... Sophia and her husband were unfortunately away dealing with guests. I was convinced that my husband was trying to communicate something to me through our granddaughter. I actually knew that Mia had mysterious powers. Since Mia turned four, I often received consultations from Sophia. When a nearby elderly person passed away, Mia would say things like, The lady said it was painful. But now she's at peace. Not only that, but she would also tell the family where the hidden savings were or convey words of gratitude from the deceased. Moreover, her voice and tone would change depending on the situation. Having heard such stories, 
I thought that perhaps Mia was conveying my husband's words at that moment. However, from Lisa's perspective, she was suddenly splashed with a bucket of water by Mia and then told about my husband's ghost, leaving her completely bewildered. As a result, she revealed her true nature all at once. What is wrong with this kid? She's creepy. Stay away from me. Go away. Lisa said, grabbing Mia and trying to push her down. At that moment, Kitty, who had been sleeping on a cushion in the corner of the room, woke up and attacked Lisa. But Lisa swatted Kitty away with her hand, causing the cat to hit the wall. Lisa then tried to hit Kitty with a nearby vase, but I stopped her with all my might. Kitty ran behind Mia for safety. Lisa, calm down, I said, while wiping her wet body with a towel and trying to soothe her as she breathed heavily in anger. My mind was filled with questions. Why does Kitty hate Lisa so much? Could something have happened when I wasn't around? Suddenly, I remembered something. I wanted to check it, but Lisa was furious, saying, You shouldn't spoil her just because she's a child. We should get rid of this cat too. I was doing my best to calm her down. When I looked at my granddaughter, I saw her biting her lip and glaring at Lisa. Mia, what's wrong? Can you see Grandpa? Because this lady told Grandpa to die soon, and that Grandma would be next. What? Immediately after, Mia started speaking in a low, growling voice, as if someone had possessed her. Her expression was resolute, unlike her usual self, and she somehow resembled my late husband. It was my daughter-in-law who poured water on my face and stuffed tissues in my mouth to stop my breathing. I won't forgive her for targeting Mary's life too. I will never let her have my property. Lisa began to tremble. Despite the room not being hot, sweat was pouring from her forehead. What are you talking about? Stop saying such nonsense. Someone get this kid out of here. Lisa shouted in anger. Ignoring Lisa's outburst, Mia furrowed her brow and wore a terrifying expression. I am Tom. I will show you proof. Listen carefully to Mia's words. Then, one of the relatives started talking about things Mia couldn't possibly know like how they broke a bone falling from a tree as a child or how it took a cousin a month to learn to ride a bike. The relatives began shouting, Tom is here and he's telling Mia as a ghost while looking around in a frenzy. Everyone, what's going on? Calm down. Lisa said, bewildered by the reactions around her. But the relatives shared a common belief. In our family, there was a legend that occasionally someone with the ability to talk to spirits would be born from my husband's or my bloodline. Everyone thought that Mia might have inherited this power. However, Mia's strange state didn't last long. When her mother, Sophia, entered the room, Mia collapsed into her arms and fell asleep. When she woke up a while later, she was back to her innocent self. Meanwhile, seeing the commotion among the relatives, I whispered in Lisa's ear. Lisa, calm down. I'll tell everyone how well you took care of Tom. Right. You'll prove that I took good care of him, won't you? Lisa said, calming down a bit as I handed her some tea. I need to go to the restroom, I said leaving the room. And when I signaled to my relatives, just a moment, 
Everyone fell silent. The reason I left the room was to go to my husband's bedroom to check on something. There, I discovered a shocking truth that made my entire body burn with anger. I will never forgive you. I will make sure justice is served. Feeling the anger welling up inside me, I carefully masked my emotions and returned to the room where Lisa and the relatives were. In my hand was a pet camera. I had bought it a while ago for Kitty and set it up in my husband's room, but it had been left unattended due to the chaos. Standing before everyone, I played the recorded data from the camera. It clearly showed my daughter-in-law harassing my husband. She was saying, Die quickly and leave the inheritance to Michael. After you, I'll target the old hag. She was cursing, pouring water from a vase on my husband's face, and stuffing tissues into his mouth. As Tom struggled and coughed, she wiped away his spit and phlegm with a towel to avoid detection. At that moment, Kitty, who was trying to protect my husband, was kicked by her. Looking down at my husband, who was gasping for breath, Lisa laughed and said, It's finally time for you to go to the other side. After confirming that he had passed away, she pretended to panic and called 911. The people watching were horrified by her actions. The unnatural decrease in towels and tissues, and the reason Kitty was only angry at Lisa, all made sense now. Later, we found out that Lisa had been harassing my husband in the same way every time she took care of him. She planned to kill my weakened husband first and then target my life. Moreover, she had the audacity to discuss her plan with my speechless husband. My husband must have been trying to warn me with his growls. With the truth revealed by the pet camera, Lisa had no escape and tried to flee, but the relatives present quickly restrained her. What kind of daughter-in-law is she? She wasn't taking care of him. She was trying to kill him. They exclaimed. Cornered, Lisa clung to her husband, Michael. Please help me. I was just trying to make sure you got your dad's inheritance quickly. I did it all for you. She pleaded. However, upon learning of his wife's true nature, my son turned pale and shouted. Stay away from me. You're a terrible woman for targeting my parents' lives. Realizing that Michael was not on her side. Lisa then turned to me, crying. Mary, please help me. You were suffering from caregiving too, weren't you? I was just trying to make it easier for you. How dare you? My husband was always dear to me. How could you harm him? I will never forgive you. At that moment, the police who had been called by one of the relatives, arrived. Lisa was miserably taken away, crying and screaming, while everyone glared at her with disdain. Later, Lisa was, of course, found guilty. Michael sued her for $20,000 in alimony and divorced her. I also sued her for $50,000 in compensation for taking my husband's life. In the end, Lisa's family paid the amount, but they were furious and said they would make her repay it once she was out of prison. Now, I live peacefully with Kitty. By the way, Mia whispered to me. Grandpa said he was sad about being sick, but he was happy you were always by his side. He said he will always be with you. Until the day I can meet my husband in heaven, I will live positively and brightly. How did you like this story? Please subscribe to the channel. See you in the next video.